Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to show you how to use two very simple to use yet powerful utilities to collect information on any specific target. And in this case, I should clarify it on domain names. And that is, the first one is Subfinder. As you can imagine, Subfinder is a utility that allows you to find subdomains for any given domain. And that's something when you want to create a, a footprint of, of any given domain, when you want to discover the information or know what the domains that are publicly available or have been publicly available in the past were for any given domain, you can use that utility. This utility, uh, the way that we're going to use it, the way that I'm going to run it, is that I'm going to run it on Golang. And I already have Golang installed on this computer. Uh, if you watch my videos, I created a video for Nuclear, a vulnerability assessment tool. And before I installed Nucleate, I installed Golang. And I'm using Golang 119.7. I'm running on Ubuntu 22.4 for this. So if you're going to follow the videos, make sure you have the same OS or use it as a reference. Once we collect that information with uh, Subfinder, we're going to extract that information, export it to a file, and then we're going to verify that information with HTTPX which is a utility that is going to send different type of probes to domains to verify the status of that. And it's going to make more sense to you once we go through the process. So the first thing that I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to install uh, Subfinder. Uh, as I mentioned to you, I already have Golang installed on my computer, on my test computer. So I'm just going to get um, the code. Actually, let me do it from here. Get, uh, hold on a second. I'm, this keyboard is acting out. So I am going to try this again. Git clone, and then you type the uh, command of what you are cloning. I'm going to leave this description or this information in the description so you can get it right from there or you could just uh, copy it from here. So I type the command, so let me hit enter. So it's cloning that, let me do ls, and where is it? And if you come here, you'll see it right here, subfinder. So let me get in there. And then you go to V2. And this is where the uh, CMD CD subfinder. OK, so this is where the uh, main go file is. So I'm going to build now, or I'm going to install subfinder on this computer using go so i'm gonna build it i'm gonna go go space build that so it builds right in this directory i'm gonna pause the video until this is complete and i'll come back okay as you see this finished it took just about a minute to complete so as you could see, now it is right here, it is built. So what I need to do now, I need to move it to the bin directory so I can access the utility from anywhere. So you can either copy it or move it. Uh, it's completely up to you. So I'm just going to copy it. Uh, let me come here, see. P space sub finder. We're going to move it to user local bin. Okay, so let me sudo it. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. So that is done. So let me see if it's working now. If I type so finder, so here it is, right? Because I didn't specify anything after the command. It says program exited, no input file provided. All right, cool. So let me do the first example of subfinder, right? So as you know, let's say that you are collecting information on any domain, for instance, nmap.org, right? Like if you are into information security or network administration, you, you know nmap, right? So let me go here. So this domain is going to have different subdomains. So how do you find the subdomains? Or if you want to go, for instance, to cnn.com and you want to know what are the other subdomains for that domain, so that's what you would use something like this. Uh, subfind minus D for a domain and you type the name of the domain that you are looking for, a map that org in this case I don't I don't want to have that advertisement in the background so it's gonna do its thing I'm gonna pause recording until it gives me some results actually he gave me the results before I pause recording so as you can see it found 36 subdomains in 6.156 seconds right so it's pretty useful so by doing this you know that now it's not that you only have one domain this is the main domain but you have the subdomains you have scan me ag you have uh, svn scan me that too so on and so forth the same with um let, for instance uh, cnm right let me go back Okay, let me let me do this one more time. Subfinder minus T. Let's say that I want to do CNN. I'm sure that this is going to take longer than Nmap. So for this, I may pause recording until it's done. But I just hit enter and see what happens. Okay, so that took... Um, some time close to two minutes to collect all that information and you're gonna see why because it detected about 600 subdomains for cnn.com i feel it says that it took one minute <laughs> 1 1.3 minutes so out of this what is useful to you if you're doing this on a corporation does it mean that all the all those domains are active at the, t at the time that you uh, collected the information? Probably not, right? Because remember, Subfinder is using open source intelligence to collect this information and it's finding these DNS records from different, uh, from different sources. So you have to verify and validate these findings. And how do you do that? You can create a script that is going to validate this for you either by uh, sending HTTP probes or maybe ICMP or any other different way or you could do it manually or this is where it comes you could use the other utility that I was referring to before that is HTTPX and HTTPX as the name says right here is a multi-purpose multi HTTP toolkit and you can read this I don't have to read this for you but what you're gonna do is this the first thing that we would like to do um, is um, save the findings and then we're gonna import the findings into HTTPX so let's go ahead and do that so what I'm gonna do here is export they're gonna do dash O and um, which is export or to an output to a file and I'm gonna name this uh, CNN domain so I for the name doesn't really matter so I'm just gonna hit enter and that's gonna go through the whole process but at the same time it's gonna generate this file here that I 
I will be using in the next uh, part of this exercise. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to pause recording until it's done, then I'll come back. All right, so this finished. So if I do um, ls, you'll see that now I have a uh, cat domain.txt file, which is basically just the output of the uh, subfinders results. Something that you have to keep in mind, and I want to be very clear when it comes to this, pay attention to the uh, domain found 677. But if we look at the previous findings, if we go up, let's see. It says 602. What I'm trying to say is that this information is not 100% accurate. Perhaps if we run this again, we're going to get different results. And that's why you should be able to use, or you should use different tools to collect the information that you're looking for. And then you should also verify the information that you find. And that's what we're going to do. So it is a great utility, but remember, because the way that it collects and finds information relies on different sources, you may get different results every now and then. So just keep that in mind. So let me come back here, actually. And if you if you notice, let me see, where do I have the file? What am I doing here? Oh, CNN domain. So you can also see, you can also use cat space, CNN domain, and WC to show you how many domains are found or how many lines, I'm sorry, are in the file. Or you can just see the, uh, the content of the file by using cat. Now, we have this information. What do we do? What, how do we verify this? That's what I was trying to say before. Now we're going to use HTTPX for that. So let me come over here and uh, get it. So let me come here and I'm going to go. Let me go back to my uh, download folders or my root folder so I don't download it in here. Okay, I'm in home. Okay, so I am going to copy it. I guess here is fine in the room. This is my, uh, my um, lab computer, so it doesn't really matter where I save it. So let me download it. Uh, type the syntax, download it, and I'll come back to the video. So I type the command, let me hit enter, and that's clone, let me do ls, and that should be here somewhere. So here it is, right? And we have to do the same magic with it before, which is using... Um, do the installation with a Golang. So what we're going to do, HTTPX, let me see what the directory structure is. So you're going to go to CDM or CMD, I'm sorry. And then from here, we go to HTTPX. And this is what we're looking for. So let's go go build and we're going to build it right here. That shouldn't take long to build but I'm going to pause recording until it is complete. Okay, so this is done. It just took, um, I guess, less than a minute. And as you can see, we have it right there. Uh, so let's uh, copy it to the uh, bin directory so we can use this from anywhere. And we're going to send it to user local bin. Okay, so there it is. So let's do this. Okay, so as you could see, we can execute the um, 
the command. Now, how do we use the information that we collected in subfinder with HTTPX? So let first let's go to that section where we have the subfinder file, the one that we exported with the CNN findings. And I don't even know where I saved it, so let me run it again. Subfinder so domain cnn.com. I'm going to pause this until it creates the um, uh, cnn domains.txt. Okay, I am back here, so let me do a lesson. As you can see, we have somewhere, let me find it, we should have the CNM file. What did I do before? Oh gosh, I didn't type the output. Okay, so let me do it again. Again, pausing the video and getting back to it. Okay, I'm back. So as you could see, here's my uh, my file uh, with the output. So I'm going to verify what subdomains are live. And the way we're going to do that is by using HTTPX. So we would come, let me just uh, do this, HTTPX space minus L for the list that we're going to use is so that's going to be CNN domains, right? And then I'm going to hit enter on that. And that's going to go through a verification process. As you can imagine, it's going to verify about 600 entries, whether they are live or, or not, it's going to do the verification. So I'm going to pause this video until it is complete and I'll come back to it. OK, so it completed the verification of the live domains and it's going to show me the live domains. Uh, something that I should have done before, now that I think about it, I should have exported this also to a list. So let me do minus O and I'm going to do um, CNN live uh, domains.txt. Uh, this is going to do exactly what I did before. And again, I should have done this when I typed the command because right now I do not have a list of live uh, domains or live subdomains. I only have the output on the screen. So let me go ahead and do this. Okay, so it's finished. So let me show you uh, this. As you can see, I have CNN domain txt, which is the original subdomain list, whatever was found with subfinders. And if we do this, cat space CNN domains WC. Uh, we have 602 entries, and if we go through the other list, the live domains, right, CNN live domains, you're going to see that it only has 243 entries that were verified to be as live at the time of the execution of the commands. Now, I hope this video was useful to you. This is something very useful when you're doing reconnaissance, when you're finding information. It saves a lot of time. Again, if you liked this video, or the only thing I ask is that you click on the like button, button, subscribe to my channel, so you'll get notified of new videos, and I will talk to you on the next video. Have a great day.